Uh, my name is Don Duvall. I'm actually the CEO of NORCAT, and it's an honor for me tonight to actually get a chance to host and welcome you to our Entrepreneurship 101 uh, Season 2. Uh, first year went so well, and we were so excited that uh, we thought, what the heck, let's do it again. And, uh, you know, by a pulse check here, it's good to know that uh, entrepreneurship, uh, in whatever shape or form it looks like, is clearly alive and well in this community. Um, the one interesting thing, just by measure of registrants, uh, we are the second biggest node still in the province of Ontario that runs this program, uh, second to only Toronto, which is doing this exact same lecture tonight starting at exactly 6 p.m. Um, mind you, they have a class of about 650 people uh, in an auditorium downtown in Toronto. Uh, we're ahead of Ottawa and we're ahead of Hamilton by registrants. So as a measure, again, of, of, of entrepreneurship, is it alive and well? If anyone ever asks you, you just remind them that, hey, Entrepreneurship 101, second biggest note as of this evening, fully appreciating that some people might taper off and not find this super exciting, which I doubt. We'll find your home addresses and badger you to bring you back. Uh, but that said, uh, very excited. Um, we're going to do a bunch of things for tonight. I'm going to give you uh, um, like a traditional lecture uh, kind of overview of uh, you know, what the program's all about. Um, in advance of that, though, I'm going to talk a little bit around the, the NORCAT Innovation Mill. Uh, some of you might know the brand of NORCAT primarily focused on training and development, health and safety. That is NORCAT, the parent company. The NORCAT Innovation Mill, and you'll see the logo momentarily, is our designate brand for our role as a regional innovation center serving the greater Sudbury community. If you have no idea what that means, you will momentarily, and I'll walk through that. Uh, we're going to talk about our role in the general, uh, in, from a provincial perspective, a bit of the resources and partners that we have. Many of you have actually been connected with some of those partners in the past. We're going to talk about some fun activities that we do, especially the ones starting this evening um, that we'll go into. Then, like any other course, we're going to talk about the logistics, the timing, the curriculum, expectations and outcomes. Uh, very important part. Two very exciting lectures that we have that are non-traditional right out of the gate. So next Wednesday and the Wednesday after that, we're trying something a bit, a bit wonky and crazy. Uh, we've bought tickets for you, so please, I hope you come. Uh, we'll explain what that is momentarily. Uh, and then lastly, just a quick outro snippet. It's about a three or four minute YouTube video about what is entrepreneurship. Uh, those who uh, studied business school and took courses in entrepreneurship, there's very few programs in Canada I find that are actually worthy of answering this question. Uh, so I really don't attempt to do it. It's messy, it's chaotic, it's not structured. There's really no perfect play, you know, playbook for it. But there's a video that I really like from the Kauffman Foundation that we'll get into. Uh, so before I get started, can I just by show of hands, who here in advance of this evening had ever even heard of NORCAT for whatever reason, be it training or development? Just a quick show of hands. Okay, how many people knew that we were an innovation center that focused on innovation entrepreneurship in advance of this course? Okay. How many of you currently have a business underway? Actual business, and by that I mean you're actually earning revenue from it. <laughs> Sorry, high, there's high hands. It doesn't matter if it's one dollar. Okay, and how many of you are actually thinking about starting a business, going out on your own in some shape or form? Okay, I hope the common thread out of the, uh, the last question uh, pertains to all of you. So, what I want to do first, um, and, and I, I just, I'm, I've lost sight of, oh, no, right in front. <laughs> Sorry, Haley, if you could stand up. Um, so Haley is the curator of Entrepreneurship 101. Um, all the work that you're going to see tonight, yes, I'm speaking, but it is the product of Haley's work this year. Uh, she is going to be the person running the program. She will be the one that when you stop showing up, reaching out to you. She will coordinate all announcements. Um, this is her baby. Uh, the reason I'm kicking it off is I've been there, I've done that, I've started a company and I've sold it. So I can appreciate all the nuances as to what you're going to be going through and the chaos. So I get the privilege of doing the opening lecture and a few of the in-person lectures that we'll be doing later on, uh, I'll, be, I'll be back, back and forth. That said, I'm usually working till about six or seven most Wednesdays anyway, so I might just pop over from the railing and sit in the front row and just watch Haley do her thing. Um, so the Norcad Innovation Mill, again, serves as the regional innovation center. And one of the things that commonly comes up is, you know, you do a lot of research in this community. And for those that are thinking on starting tech-oriented businesses, there's a great delineation that says, Research is translating money into knowledge. So most academic institutions focus on research. They get a lot of government funding, a lot of private center funding, and they make knowledge. 
Innovation, which is again our role, is we're focused on helping you take your knowledge and turning it back into money or some sort of value. So if you're not interested here in actually making an impact, be it monetary or not, this course will just be interesting for you. But our desired outcome is to actually get you to a point where you're actually making a business viable and sustainable. And it's gonna look very different for everyone. This is our wonderful new logo, de designating the NORCAT Innovation Mill. A bit about NORCAT at the onset. I'm only gonna focus on the strategic priority number one, but our role here is to serve this community, working with a group of stakeholders to either help you start or accelerate the growth of an innovative business. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean it has to be technology oriented, but we're gonna push you to think something beyond just having a little mom and pop retail type store. That's interesting, but what about franchising? What about online distribution? What about creative supply chain innovation? We'll push you and test you in many different ways as this course goes. Reason being is we as a community have to figure out how to help would-be entrepreneurs, existing entrepreneurs, grow, generate jobs and wealth. Why? Because two-thirds of our country's entire contribution to GDP comes from small startup companies. That's just by measure of job creation. So you being here tonight is a huge contributor, and our job is to make sure that we can help you get to those goals quick, fast, and cheap. And if you're gonna fail, we're gonna help you fail fast, you're gonna fail cheap, and we hope that you get back on the horse and come back with something new. So before we actually get into the course overview, the Innovation Mill, there's a lot of other things that we do beyond education. Entrepreneurship 101 is our flagship program. Everything that we do from an educational perspective and banks itself around this program. So you're in the marquee educational program. That said, there's a few things I want you to be aware of that we also do. And these are all, for the most part, free. Some do have a, uh, uh, a cost recovery cost associated with them. But the reason that the vast majority of these are free, that if you're going to start a business, odds are you don't have a lot of cash, so the last thing we're gonna do is charge you money. So we get funding from the Ontario Ministry of Research and Innovation to pay for a team of individuals and or we have volunteers that do a lot of this work to then give it to you to help you accelerate your business growth and it's mostly free. So that's very exciting, I hope. The core engine room of the NORCAT Innovation Mill is our mentorship and advisory services team. So we have about 12, at this point, 12 very eminent tried and true mentors that have been there, done that. Uh, there's a, an onboarding process or an application process to get access to them, but they have a Rolodex of prospective customers a mile long. They have sectoral expertise among a myriad of sectors, and they have the time and the capacity to help mentor and coach you. They don't work for you, so they're not gonna take an Excel spreadsheet home and work on it all night for you because most of them have day jobs, uh, but they work with you. The value of that is unbelievable. We have 12 right now, we'll probably have about 20 in the next six months. That is something that if you're really beyond the educational component, we will connect you with one of these mentors and or a mentorship team. Education, I've spoken to. Capital services, it might be a bit premature for many of you here, but if you need help getting access to grant capital, so non-dilutive grant capital where you don't have to pay it back, we're very good at helping you navigate that landscape. There's federal pools of capital, there's provincial pools of capital, and there's municipal pools of capital. Um, on the flip side, for those that are looking to raise equity capital, it's a very different game. Helping you with valuations, creative comp models, shareholder agreements, very, very complicated stuff that you have to make sure that you get right. Perhaps by the end of this course, as some of the previous graduates went through, uh, you'll be looking at that. And you need to recognize what you don't know because entering into a poor shareholder agreement at a poor valuation at the wrong time can prohibit a lot of things downstream. And I can tell you horror stories of what happens if you don't get that part right. Market research, we have a fully equipped market research team. Why is that important? You're developing a very rudimentary plan. You're trying to come up with, what are the questions I should be asking? I don't know what I don't know. How big is my market? How do I price this? Who are my competitors? One of the great services that we have that I define as kind of low-hanging fruit, you can articulate those questions, translate them into a written document, send it to us. We have eight full-time market research analysts waiting for your questions. We will then send you secondary research reports from the leading research houses globally and give you those research reports for free. 
The average value of those are about $15,000 per report. They're from AMR, Gartner, Frost, IDC, Comscore, all the major market research centers. The reason you get them for free is, well, you don't expect an entrepreneur to pay 15K, so we collectively, with our other partner innovation centers, negotiated deals with these research houses to, to give them to you for free. The bet that the research houses have is that when you become successful and have the capability to pay, that you'll remember this night, and one day you'll engage them as a potential partner and pay them for the market research. It's a test, but for you right now, it's free. Huge value. The other ones along the bottom are a little bit different. Uh, we do a little bit of software development. Um, you know, if you need a website design, branding strategy, uh, there's a few people here tonight that help out with that. Uh, HR and talent, to ser to, uh, talent services. If you get to the point where you're lucky enough to actually hire someone, what happens if they have no money? How do you pay in options? Are options the right thing? Deferred revenue. Does somebody work for free? How do you do staggered payment cycles? A lot of creative things that are really simple, but most people aren't aware of them. We have a whole group that can focus on that. Well, whole group, that's mainly the area that I like to focus on. Uh, for anyone doing mining, we actually own and operate a, a mine. Uh, most people don't realize that NORCAD as a nonprofit actually has that. We're the only one globally that I can think of that actually has an operating mine. And then our new addition here is the Fortin Discovery Lab, uh, just down the corner. We're going to be doing an open house, and you'll all receive an invitation to that. Uh, but we have one of the, I'm not going to say worlds, because that's a bit, uh, a bit aggressive. But by far and away in Canada, we have one of the most state-of-the-art advanced maker spaces. So anyone who's making a product, if you're looking for 3D printers, CNC machines, EMC testing, injection molding, uh, electronics design and circuitry, environmental chamber testing, I think that's about it. Um, we have it here, it's 2,500 square feet just around the corner. We have the, you know, the, the covering in the windows right now so no one can see what's going on in there. But we're gonna do a big debut. Uh, the way that, that the, the system operates is, is, is more unique than the actual assets that we have in there. Everything I just mentioned is that arguably commoditized in the Canadian economy now. But we're fortunate enough to have Tom Fortin, hence the rationale for the name, uh, is actually the director of the Fortin Discovery Lab. It is his facility, we have a partnership with NORCAT, it is unbelievable. So if you're thinking on doing something that's product oriented, electronics oriented, software oriented, that might have a mechanical component, we're lucky enough to have what I would put in the top three in Canada here, led by uh, one of the more eminent entrepreneurs in our community. So I wanted to give you some insight that where education fits into the broader role that we play as an innovation center. And as you're thinking through your business, at any point you can say, look, I think I'm, I, I want to con continue with this, but I want to access these other things. And the individual, can I ask you to stand just for a sec, Kyle? The individual that will help you on the advisory piece will be Kyle McCall. So keep that in mind, and then we'll move from there. Okay, um, a couple things here, as I made mention already. We're sector agnostic, so we don't care what type of business you want to start. Trust me, if we have the capacity to support you at the stage now, and we're gonna push you to be scalable. Again, if you're thinking something small and interesting, we'll push. If you tell us to stop, then we'll stop. But it's our job to really make you think bigger, better, faster, cheaper. If you aren't sure about the, the state of entrepreneurship beyond the actual attendance here, I can tell you that there is some exceptional entrepreneurial endeavors in our community. Um, and for those that are able to join tonight after the lecture, and Haley will explain to you what that is, there's gonna be some entrepreneurs that represent these companies at the forum afterward tonight. Um, some of these companies have gone through our programs and some have not. But the beauty of this is that a year from now, eight to nine months from now when this course is done, some of you are gonna have very successful startup companies. Others might realize, not for me, but one day we would love to have your logo and your brand on this and invite you back to really kind of get a feel for what it's like. That said, some exceptional companies that we have been working with, many of these are clients of the NORCAD Innovation Mill. Some of these have actually attended this course last year and are doing very well, generating revenue and jobs. The one really interesting thing that I wanna say is beyond the capacity that we have in Sudbury, NORCAT is one of 14 NORCAT-like regional innovation centers throughout the province. And why you should care about that is that if you come in and ask me a question tonight related to your startup that I don't know the answer to, we'll find somebody in the network, either in Toronto, Ottawa, Hamilton, Chatham, Windsor, there's all these little NORCAT-like things in those communities 
all have mentors, all have educational programs, all have online resources. We're all funded by the same parent entity out of the Ontario government, and we are forced to collaborate with each other. It's not forced because we enjoy it, uh, we get along very well. But that said, uh, if you have questions, with the capacity um, in the entire province, we can help you. It might involve a Skype call, it might involve a conference call, it might involve us helping you get funding to go to Toronto to a conference, uh, but be forewarned. If you ask for it, odds are we have it and we can get it to you pretty quick. So, a couple of interesting things. As I made mention on the capital side, we know FedNor, NOHFC, the Greater Sudbury Development Corporation, the Ontario Trillium Foundation, and a, a few other government funding entities very well. If you need help navigating them, we work with them, we understand it, and our endorsement now after two years actually means something. So if you put an application into the NOHFC and they call us and say, hey, we understand they're a client, we're gonna openly share our thoughts. Uh, we've been asked to do that a multitude of times. There is benefit in going through this program, but also you need to ensure that we kind of work together to figure out how to help you. Uh, we have clients that we've endorsed and they've gotten funding. Whether or not it's directly related to that, I don't know. Um, we're also partnered with the Mars Discovery District, which is one of the world's largest urban innovation centers in downtown Toronto. Huge resources and capacity, great place to be, uh, and I was there for about, for about five years working there. All the academic institutions. Just a quick show of hands, are there, are there any people here from Laurentian, Cambrian, or College Boreal? Fantastic. Well, as I made mention earlier, one of our graduate companies from this program last year, who's in the Fortin Discovery Lab, were engineering students from Laurentian University. So there's a great pedigree already forming. And then there's a few other organizations. The one thing I do want to mention is a new program that we launched, an advisory mentorship program called Ascent North. Is there anyone here that wants to start a business that does something beyond just making money? It benefits a social issue or an environmental issue. Can I just get a quick pulse? Maybe. I'm going to encourage you, and I know the deadline has, I think has already come and gone. Uh, we have exceptional turnout for people wanting to learn more about this program. If you can tonight on the NORCAT website, the Ascent North program overview is there. For this class, you can disregard the due date that's already passed, but if you're looking to start a business, be it nonprofit or for-profit, that addresses a return more than just financial, meaning it has a societal or environmental benefit to the community, and money's kind of secondary, yet you still make money, please check out the Ascent North program. It was something that we pushed hard to build a brand, and, and, and it's our first year, so it's a little bit messy and chaotic, but there's money for it, and when I say money for it, I mean money that can actually, we can give to you to get going, um, and there's some really fascinating advisory workshops that we're going to have as part of this. Um, just want to make sure everyone was aware of that if you weren't already. Okay, the fun stuff. Okay, like you can see up on the screen, it says Startup Drink Sudbury. Uh, so what it is is an informal networking night. Uh, it's the last Wednesday of every month, and we host it at Little Montreal, which is downtown. Uh, we wanted to keep it at a local restaurant and bar just to give them a little bit of exposure to. And uh, it's from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. and we encourage everyone to come out. Uh, we have some students come from last year. We have NORCAT employees. We also have community leaders. Uh, we also had the mayor attend one time. So it's very diverse and it's excellent for networking and getting to know other people in the community who are in the same boat as you, who are starting a business and have different resources that you might be able to benefit from. Uh, but that said, the, I think it's fair to say that probably 50% of the AMP 101 students, I don't know if you would agree with that, but about 50% of the AMP 101 students typically go in some shape or form. And what's even more exciting is you get to know each other because a couple of companies have formed as a result of getting to know what you do. And then sometimes we do comparable to a beatnik poetry reading at a bar where we actually ask two or three people to get up, spend two minutes, just describe what you're doing. In a bar atmosphere, it's loud and people are kind of paying attention, kind of not. But inevitably, one person might say, that's kind of cool. You've got your guard down, you're a bit more relaxed. Hugely valuable. And even more so, other tech entrepreneurs, some pretty eminent business people just show up. So you never know. So if you believe in FOMO, fear of missing out, well, it should be ingrained. FOMO could happen tonight if you're not there. 
But again, I can't, it's not part, you don't, you don't lose the credit, right? If they don't yes, come, yeah, yes. so you don't lose the credit. <laughs> it's fun, it's part of the culture of startups, right? Kasi me, me, chaotic, et cetera. And we go right after this is done. We usually hang out here for about 10 minutes, then we just go. So if you get there before eight, that's fine. Thank you, Haley. Okay, so the real reason why you're here. The Entrepreneurship 101, the goal of the program. Well, as I made mentioned, Entrepreneurship 101, this program, this curriculum was actually created in 2006 by the Mars Discovery District. Um, there are close to 35,000 people attending um, last year. And you can do that through a variety of mechanisms through online repurposing, et cetera. There's about six of the regional innovation centers in the province that run this. And as I mentioned at the onset, quite excitedly, we are the second biggest. Got to stay ahead of, uh, got to stay ahead of Hamilton because they're starting to really grow. But really the goal of this program is, is to, to provide, I'll call them tech entrepreneurs, social innovators. And if the word tech kind of scares you, don't be. Because that's just the way that we're trained to think and the capacity that we recruit and hire as mentors and educators all think scalability in tech. And if you're thinking small, I guarantee you at some point over the 30 lectures, you're gonna be enlightened to go, well, wait a minute, that's interesting. Why? Because we wanna make you really successful. Um, and the, again, the outcome is though, we're gonna give you the fundamental tools. The content was built by tried and true entrepreneurs. There was about 30 collaborators in 2006 that started this, but the program has evolved tremendously based on what it was then. The good news is it's not an academic course. This is a hands-on applied entrepreneurship course. Um, and we're very excited. Uh, one of the more exciting things is that, yes, we do have functional thematic topics. What is marketing? What is intellectual property? What's a trade secret? What's a, what is a patent? Do you need to think about that? How do you structure deals? Grant capital, dilutive capital. There's all these complex things that might sound like jargon right now that you'll be able to speak to. That said, we digress about every four lectures or so, or every three, depending on the timing, and we do something called a lived it lecture. So last year we had Tom Fortin. Uh, we've had Tom Palangelo, the founder and CEO of Whipware. Uh, we've, has anyone here heard of Hardline Solutions? Well, we had a guy named Walter Sigelkow, who was the co-founder and CEO of that. These individuals are invited in just to tell their story. They're here to tell their story as to how difficult and hard it was and how chaotic and how non-textbook their startups were designed to motivate you that you're gonna have days where you hate life working on your business and you have to accept that and get over that really quickly. Then you're gonna have that one customer who's willing to talk to you, that you're gonna provide a product or service, you're gonna to have to do it for free just so you can say that you have a customer. And you're gonna hear different stories like this from all of these people who have been there, done that. And it's a momentary digression that is, by far, I think it's the most exciting lectures that we do, not to say the functional stuff is, is not exciting, but the lived at lectures are in person, on this stage, very motivating, very exciting, and you get to ask questions, be it professional, personal. We've had some really personal questions around work-life balance. Do you resign your job? Do you take a second mortgage out? Do you drain your RSPs? This is real. And, and there's a ton of stories where people do these things, and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. So I would highly encourage you, any chance you get to attend those. And then the last goal of the program is, is networking. Um, you know, for those who heard uh, Haley's interview on CBC Morning on uh, Tuesday, you know, she hit the nail on the head that one of the big benefits of this course is networking. I guarantee you one or two entities will form a company 30 weeks on. It's hugely valuable. You're all here thematically for these reasons. So at least you got something to talk about at a bare minimum, right? So that's the goal. Um, as I may mention, number two is the in-person part. There are gonna be a series of lectures that are gonna be via web stream. Still here, same time. Uh, we'll speak a little bit about that. If you miss a lecture, that's okay. It's gonna be put on the web with the PowerPoint and the video so you can watch me tomorrow if you wanna watch it again for some strange reason. Um, but beyond that, on the NORCAT portal under education, the NORCAT Innovation Mill tab under education, we have direct, ac direct access to tons. It's almost information overload. Thankfully, there's a good search engine tool that enables you to do keyword searches. But we right now have a ton of articles, templates, videos, podcasts, reports, how-to guides, workshops, tons of stuff 
that collectively the province has now spent over $10 million in content development for stuff, bite-sized chunks, designed to help you answer questions that you may have right there and then at two in the morning. We interviewed a ton of entrepreneurs when this was created at Mars to say entrepreneurs like to learn by videos that are about seven minutes long. Did you know that? Who knows? But there's a ton of seven minute videos because you told us that's what we wanted to create. So I would highly encourage you tonight, well maybe not tonight because you might have a few drinks and you'll be tired when you get home, but tomorrow, cruise around. It's a hugely valuable resource, $10 million in the making. If you actually look at the ISPs that are logging on to see this, the US and the UK and even India now are fast using the Entrepreneurship 101 content that has been created here for all the regional innovation centers in the province of Ontario. You access it through the NORCAT site, it takes you to the Mars Discovery District site, which is our partner in this. But the content is, is shared. And there's no passwords, there's no fee, all free. Why? Because you don't have any money, because you're startup companies. Uh, so definitely check that out. Um, okay, the logistical stuff, critically important stuff. So it will be every Wednesday from 6 to 7 p.m. at the NORCAT Center, unless otherwise stated, um, here. And uh, so each student was issued a Entrepreneurship 101 card. And so all you're going to have to do is scan it, and then you can come take a seat, and I'll demonstrate what it's going to look like. Take your barcode on your card, and you're just going to place it in front of here, and it's going to scan you in. So we can just keep track of your attendance on here, and at the end of the year, we can see how many uh, lectures you've attended. And so if you qualify for your certificate at the end, or if you're uh, a qualifier for the Upstart competition. So just make sure you carry these with you every week, or you have the option to leave them here in our card holder, and I'll make sure they're nice and safe. Uh, the logistical thing is, is we started at 6.01 tonight. It will start a minute earlier henceforth. It starts at 6 o'clock sharp because we need to get it ingrained into you that when you're here for the web stream, Mars starts at 6 o'clock for the live web stream. And the room's set up the exact same. We just tilt the chairs and you watch it here and it comes through the sound. Uh, they get some unbelievably eminent speakers uh, when we do the web stream. You have the option of watching it from home. Uh, last year, by far and away, the majority came here because you get to hang out, talk, and do stuff. And plus, it's just easier to think and be creative maybe if you're not in your home. Um, you have to attend 20 of the 30 lectures to be eligible for two things. One, a NORCAT certificate in entrepreneurship, which actually means something because it's part of the Ontario Network of Entrepreneurs program. So those thinking about in their educational you know, pursuits you know, having that you know, professional development uh, and a certificate is important, you have to attend 20 of the 30 lectures. The other thing that 20 of 30 lectures gets you is eligibility to participate in the NORCAT Upstart competition. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, and we actually have last year's winner here, which is a pleasant surprise. So, but what I'll get into that momentarily, but the Upstart competition essentially is a competition where you can win cash. It's a business plan competition. So, if you don't or are not able to attend 20 of the 30, it becomes problematic. The other caveat to that is you need to be here for the in-person lectures. So of that 20 or 30, you can't just come to here for all the web stream. You need to be here for all the in-person lectures. There aren't that many. It's, less, it's about half. So 15. We're going to get to the curriculum momentarily. There's always exceptions to the rule. If you have something major, you just have to take it up with Haley. And Haley's tough. The reason being is we need to create a culture of fairness, right? So if somebody's here consistently, they should have the option to participate in the upstart competition. You know, a couple of ringers who show up for two lectures, it's not fair. So just be forewarned, and the competition last year was outstanding, absolutely outstanding. And the model that we have to get you ready is very exciting. So walk in, click, click, sit down. Six o'clock it starts, guaranteed to be done talking around 6.45ish. 15 minute Q&A are optional, then you can leave. Last Wednesday, start up drinks, web stream, you're here as well. Okay, so here's the curriculum. Hopefully those that didn't enjoy school aren't shuddering right now, if you, uh, if you wanna get a sense. I'm just, uh, everyone I think has this when they walked in. Did everyone get the handout of the curriculum? So a few important things. Um, 
first of all, I know I made mention of the uh, um, all lectures are here. Well, we're starting out of the gate with two exceptions that I'll get in momentarily. Um, and it's just by virtue of the number of people that want to see these two speakers. Um, Ilsa Turnick, just to give you a sneak preview of a couple slides later, uh, has been voted uh, the top female CEO in Canada three years in a row. Rhodes Scholar, Olympian, a whole myriad of credentials that's absolutely baffling. You know, first president of a venture capital company in Canada. Uh, next Wednesday, um, Science North and the Cavern, we'll, we'll speak to you about that. Uh, on October the 8th, uh, Tom Rand, one of Canada's preeminent clean tech entrepreneurs. So anyone thinking about environmental, anyone thinking about social, anyone thinking about technology as it relates to clean tech. He'll be speaking as part of the annual general meeting at the Caruso Club. It's a dinner. It's a bit of a longer commitment. Uh, we're going to ask you specifically to RSVP because we actually have all bought you tickets. It's not the cheapest thing in the world to go to. Um, but what, how it's going to work is that each of you is, depending on the number of tables, is going to sit at a different table. And we're going to have a little bit of game around the importance of networking. Won't disclose to you all the details until the date draws a bit nearer. But we have tickets for everyone. Beyond that, there are going to be some courses on entrepreneurial management uh, taught by Nathan Monk, uh, understanding that running an, a small venture is nothing like running a big venture. So those who are coming currently from bigger companies and want to do a startup, you can check the big company knowledge at the door because it, you know, it does not apply. And if that scares you, that's great. You know, it's more exciting that way. Um, customer discovery and market intelligence. Market intelligence, just a more fancier way of saying market research. If you have one hour to try to figure out how to best do a sales call or one hour how to best understand who your competitors are, yeah, you can go into Google and type in keywords or what else can you do? So it's a pretty tactical approach to how do you do market research? Does anyone here use LinkedIn groups? Does anyone here do content marketing? Does anyone here use clout? If you don't know these tools, well, you should and you will when you go through that lecture. Developing your value proposition by Joe Wilson, um, educational lead again at the Mars Discovery District. Has anyone here ever heard of the elevator pitch? The concept is you start on the ground floor, by the time you get to the floor that you're going to, if you can't describe your business to the person beside you by the time you get off the elevator, you don't know your business. That is a very difficult thing to get right in a very short period of time. And one of the things that drives me bonkers are brand statements that, and it was a great exercise by Daniel Pink, where he took 50 or 60 interesting companies, well-known brands, went online, printed out the page that had their value propositions, cut them out, put them in a hat, put all the logos on a whiteboard, and invited audience members up in one of his lectures and says, pull out the value proposition and see if you can associate it with what company. Almost all of them couldn't be done. So there was confusion as to if your value proposition can't be linked to your brand, well, maybe you need to try to think how you do your branding. Great exercise. Some of the bigger companies like just do it. Okay, you, you know that's Nike. But other ones that describe it, you're like, I have no idea what this could pertain to. So value proposition will be very interesting. Uh, product development. So the whole process, irrespective of industry, if you're software, you're making something, you're a service, how do you go from an idea to take it right through to an actual finished prototype product? This lecture will be taught by two of our tenants uh, just around the corner. They've built and sold a company, and now they're under their second one. Very interesting, very exciting. Uh, a lived it lecture by Mike Amos, a former, now, now former CEO of Empathica, essentially a very sophisticated survey company. Has anyone here heard of SurveyMonkey or used tools like that? Wait till you hear the company that he built and just recently sold. Fascinating. You might not know it by the brand, but you've probably seen his product. He's going to be coming in and telling his story. Intellectual property. Does anyone have a good handle on what intellectual property is? So if I ask you to describe to me the difference between a trade secret and copyright, the tenure of a US patent versus Canadian patent, what prior art search means, all these different things. Intellectual property can be the most painfully boring thing in the world, but it's unfortunately one of those necessary evils if you're making something. Um, we can get it. There's a lot of good debates that people have around just throughout the whole patent thing because it's difficult to prosecute a patent. Nobody has the money to pay for a lot of lawyers. And yet there's some industries that live by them. 
are you doing something that you should be very, very concerned about intellectual property? Anthony DeFasikas is a senior partner at Norton Rose Fulbright. What's really exciting about Anthony is he is one of Canada's top intellectual property lawyers, and he loves coming north. So it's really exciting to have him. Uh, the business model canvas, has anyone heard of the business model canvas? It's a great tool. Uh, it's a great tool to simplify your business and your revenue model. We will be printing out large business model canvases, especially once we get to this part of the course, people are gonna be starting to think about better articulating and defining your business. And also some people will be thinking about the upstart competition and the business model canvas is just literally a big giant piece of paper with eight or nine quadrants that asks you two or three questions and you put post-it notes on it. You take a step back, come back and you go, oh, I get it. Startups, one of the things that I advocate for and then I guess by virtue my team must advocate it, otherwise they'll be in trouble if they don't support me. Um, any feedback, any suggestions that you get as tech startup entrepreneurs to suggest that you need to build a 20 or 30 page business plan, I'm gonna tell you, just let that go. The people that tell you to do that typically don't get it. You know, it's, it, and, and mark my words, by the time you get to a beautifully articulated 50 page business plan, you've done all these references, the world's passed you by, the world's changed. That archaic model of building the old plans was pre-technology, and if you don't get to the market fast, fully appreciating that your cost of entry is important, but you try something, you pilot, you fail. You listen, learn, build, measure, repeat. Listen, learn, build, measure, repeat, over and over. We're gonna get into that in the business model canvas, where it's okay not to know everything. If you're 70% of the way you think you're right, just go for it. If your cost of entry into risk is minimal, I sometimes say don't even worry about market research. If you're building an app and you know how to do it in your spare time, who cares who the competitors are? Just do it. Anyhow, Mark Zimmerman does a great job describing that much better than I do. Uh, you know, business planning tools. You'll hear Jane talk about avoiding the big one. Something simple. Try it. Course correct. Tweak. Um, I lived at lecture on social innovation. So we'll have Renny Badlad, if I pronounce that right. For those that are interested in having a return beyond just financial, this will be a really, really good lecture. So that's the fall term. Some unbelievable speakers, great content. I promise you, you will be more inspired than ever by the time December 10th hits. And then everything just falls apart in the winter. No, I'm just kidding. The winter is just as exciting. Um, does anyone know the story of Stack Brewery? Has anyone heard of Stack Brewery? Does anyone know how Sean and Mike, the brewmaster, met? Do you, have, do you know how the genesis of Stack Brewing came to be? Well, I'm not going to spoil it. He's going to tell you the story. Uh, it's fascinating. Absolutely fascinating how they have come to be. Uh, and I can't wait for you to hear, uh, hear that story. Uh, we're going to have something on Marcom. Uh, Jeff McIntyre will be coming in. Again, good insight. Marketing is a key thing that we've really been focused on here at NORCAT to get, our, to get the word out. We have a couple of uh, lectures that we're still trying to figure out who we want to have. So there's a TBD there on January 21st, and then one near the uh, uh, contract manufacturing, and then one on April 29th. So, so we don't go overly ahead of the curve in terms of planning, but rest assured we'll have some great speakers. Sales. Um, if, if you can't sell, right? If you're not selling, you're dying. So it's not intuitive in everyone. How do you recognize if you have the, you know, you got what it takes to sell? Uh, sales here will focus on business to business, but there's also going to be a part of that lecture that'll be on retail, so business to consumer, if you're selling a widget to the end buyer. Uh, Mark Elliott is an exceptional speaker. We're going to do that one via, uh, via web stream. Negotiations. We've had great examples even in the last three months of startup companies, pre-revenue, pre-cap, get into a, a situation where the customer says, Okay, if you build it, I'll give you an advance to hire some contractors to build it. In return, I want to have this type of deal. Well, you as an entrepreneur might reflect and go, I have no other options. Are there any negotiation points I should consider if someone wants to do a forward buy, pay me in advance to get the product? What are the liabilities if I don't deliver? So how do you negotiate? So some of the topics there will come up. Very exciting. Um, We've invited Walter Sigelkow back on February 18th. If you want to hear a really fascinating story, 
uh, and he delivers it in such a nonchalant way and some of the risks he took to build what is now a very successful international mining supply company. Do not miss that. Uh, Marie McKaig, selecting a board of advisors and or a board of directors. Do you need a board of directors? Do you need a board of advisors? Here's a little tidbit that should inspire you. Some of the most successful startup companies, when you go to their homepage, they say advisory board. You click on it and you go, wow, this company must know what's going on. One of the most fascinating facts, most of those advisors are just loaning their name. They have no functional role. They don't have meetings. All the company has said, I need your brand to help people think that I'm bigger than just a little mom and pop startup in a basement. And you know what? If you don't do it, your competitors will do it. So very, very important thing that Marie will talk about. That's one example of some great tidbits as this course goes on that you'll learn. Um, financial planning, budgeting, you need to have the, you know, the fundamental knowledges of various financial statements. You know, what's a P&L? You know, what's a balance sheet? Those two are interesting. The reality is the most important thing that you have to worry about as a startup is cash. As much as, you, as much as an accountant will hate me for saying this, you shouldn't really care about your annual statements, you shouldn't really care about your balance sheet, your assets, all that stuff. It's a privilege to be able to care about that stuff. You gotta care about, if you do take the venture and you depend on whatever you th comes out of this course as your livelihood, the only thing you need to care about is where you get the next couple of bucks to pay for your next meal. Uh, so, I don't wanna scare anyone, but Care about cash, how much cash you have in the bank at all times, if and when you make this venture purely independent of any other revenue source in your life. Uh, recruiting, talking about the team. Having a partner in a startup is like being married. If that startup has ownership in your company and it doesn't go well, it's a really awful divorce. I would say 90% of all new ventures fail, not because of the product, they fail because of the team. And any day of the week, I would invest in an A team with a B product, but I would never invest in a B team with an A product. Never. So finding the people that you want to work with, be it customers, suppliers, people part of your team, is absolutely critical. Entrepreneurial leadership. Charles Plant. Great speaker. Uh, one of my former colleagues. He and I had countless debates. Unbelievable leadership coach, management coach. He's going to talk to you about putting things in a, in a perspective that I guarantee you, you have never done before. Crowdfunding. Uh, has anyone heard of uh, Indiegogo or Kickstarter? Can I just, just to get a sense? Has anyone not heard of these sites? You will be very enlightened to see some of the mechanisms in which you can cr crowdsource forward buys for your product or service. There's been some absolutely wonky ones. I'm sure the people, you've heard about the potato salad guy. Has anyone heard about that? How much did he raise? 50, 60, 70 thousand dollars on a joke saying, hey, I'm gonna make a potato salad recipe, put it on, and people started paying him to the point where now he's gotta deliver all this potato salad and make up a recipe. <laughs> Google it tonight, potato salad Kickstarter. Just, you'll be like, wow, that's how it works. Um, baffling. But another tool in terms of raising capital that you strongly need to consider. This is a new world. And if you're spending six months writing a 500 page business plan, I guarantee you someone else has your idea, they've already raised 100K and they're, and they're making money. Not to belabor the whole business plan thing. Uh, we're gonna have a, a lived it lecture from uh, a panel of three in the healthcare field. It'll be very exciting. Raising money from angels. Uh, Jamie Dewar, one of our mentors here. Uh, Dewar de Hamelin, Legend Boats. Uh, if, I don't know if anyone's heard of Legend Boats, but unbelievably eminent fellow in terms of raising capital and making angel investments. Do not miss that lecture, great speaker as well. Venture capital, kind of the next stage after angel capital. And then we get into the pitch by Peter Evans. How to tell your story to either sell to a customer and or raise money. And it's time quite eloquently to coincide with the next uh, series of lectures which will be the upstart competition. I guess it's not really a lecture, the next competition. That's the curriculum. I hope that's meeting expectations. It's very complicated to coordinate all these speakers. Haley's done an exceptional job in doing that. Um, some of these people come in from different locations. 
Uh, as an example of one of the speakers we had last year that we are working on bringing in, as we had the co-founder of Bose, you know, the audio speaker system. Uh, he was a, a graduate student at MIT back in the 60s and came up with this idea for this new high fidelity speaker. You want to talk about something that inspires you to, to, to start a company. We're, we're toying with the idea of bringing him in, as well as, as a few people from, uh, from uh, Amazon.com as well, talking about how you do mass online sales. So some really cool stuff coming down the pipe. Um, in terms of course communication, uh, you need to ensure that we have your email addresses and join our LinkedIn and or Facebook group and follow us on Twitter. Uh, it's tough for us to do things by the phone, so we do mass pushes if anything changes. Um, if you're not on Facebook or LinkedIn, that's okay. It's a, there's a bit of redundancy built in, as long as we at a minimum have your email. We'll post out things as they come up. Any questions that you have at any time over the next 30 lectures, n101 at norcat.org, it forwards to a couple of people so we have a bit of redundancy built in to ensure that we can get you a timely answer on anything. So, uh, as I mentioned, we have uh, two of the big lectures coming up. First and foremost will be next Wednesday at the Valley Cavern at Science North. Timing's a little bit off. 6.30 to 7.30 down at the bottom, kind of leftish there, will be networking reception, cash bar for those that are interested. Um, there'll be uh, the keynote presentation from Ilsa starting at 7.30, and then there'll be a bit of wrap-up networking. This is an in-person lecture. I know it's a little off on the time and location's a bit tough. Please try to do your best to attend this. We'll be taking attendance at the door, we'll have to, and you'll know by this comment right here that you'll have to look for Haley to sign in, okay? One of Canada's preeminent female executives, leaders, she's been in parts of tons of start, uh, startups. Her main focus is on women in leadership, so especially the women in the room. How do you balance family? At what point do you take the risk? Unbelievably uh, eminent speaker. Uh, you know, grew up in Soweto as a university student during the Soweto riots in South Africa, and then Rhodes Scholar, and then being the first you know, female president of a VC firm. It's really a remarkable story. And to boot, she has four children. So. Uh, definitely worthwhile. The next Wednesday, this guy's coming. Uh, if you know David Suzuki, you'll soon know Tom Rand. Uh, he's fast becoming a, an em eminent celebrity in the clean tech world. Uh, he's just promoting his second book, uh, so everyone will get a book. Now, you have to attend a chamber event, and yes, there's a few components of the chamber event which aren't going to be direct interest to you. But we're trying to make it fun in that every 101 student will be positioned at a table and you will have tasks to interview, you know, uh, I guess connect with these people and network, share your ideas as part of a networking initiative. If you're uncomfortable with that, well, have a conversation with Haley. And she can work, out, work, work you out and make you uncomfortable. We've bought your tickets. If for whatever reason you can't go, we're, we're going to send out reminders over the next two weeks. If you, uh, if you can't go, by all means, let us know just so we don't pay money for a seat at a table and a meal. It's a bit of a commitment. It's going to be about two, two and a half hours because there's some, some components you have to sit through that don't directly apply. But it's a great meal at the very least, right? <laughs> it's a great meal at the Caruso Club. So those are the only two anomalies that we're going to have in the course. But you know, for anomalies, not too bad. Science Cavern, Neil Saturna, Caruso Club, Tom Rand. Trust me, it'll be fun. Okay. We're fortunate enough to have last year's winner here, which is a great surprise. So Amanda Darling, if you just stand up. Uh, Amanda actually won our uh, Entrepreneurship 101 Upstart competition last year. Um, just to put in perspective how important the Upstart competition is, uh, I guess now it would be five years ago, the runner-up at the Upstart competition in Toronto, and there was only 10 competitors. They didn't win, but they were the runner-up in 2009. In 2011, they sold their company to Intel for $35 million. During a recession. During a recession. There were two co-founders that owned it 50-50. There was a staggered three-year buyout. You do the math. <laughs> so even if you don't win, Keep in mind that it's the judges that we bring in, the connections that we bring to you, the coaching that you get to get your few minutes of fame on the stage to do the pitch. Please take it seriously. 
It's not an educational exercise. This is about starting a business, making money, and worrying about cash and the next dollar you get in. Customers, references, all that sort of stuff. So I have a brief two or three minute video that I, I said I'm not going to do an answer to this question because there are about 500 million definitions if you Google what does it mean to be an entrepreneur. Um, but I'm just going to click this because I, I think this is interesting. And it's from um, the Kauffman Foundation. So we'll, we'll crank the volume here and hopefully you can hear it. I'm Jeffrey Clapp. I'm a serial entrepreneur. I think the most important thing is to get out of theory. A lot of startup founders meet at a coffee shop and they keep meeting at coffee shops and they keep talking about how they're going to change the world and how amazing things are going to be and how wonderful they're going to be. And everything's in the future tense. Go build something. Go do something. It doesn't even really matter what it is, but do something together, right? Build something, make something happen. Across the board of entrepreneurship, traction is so important. I'm looking for people who solved something, they did something. I don't even care if it was great, just that they went through the process together. Pitch skills are overrated. Build something amazing and investors will find you. They want to see what's your distribution model, what's the product, what's the problem you're solving, how are you going to access these people, how much money are you going to make, and do you have the right team to get there? It's not okay just to sit in your office and say, this is what I think people would want. Great startups go and talk to their users. Great startups get out there. Great startups say, hmm, if I want to build a photo sharing app, Let's talk to people who take photos. If someone's truly vested in helping you with the company, it doesn't start by saying, well, give me a percentage of the company and then I'll help you. You should meet people in the ecosystem that provide value. And one of the things I really struggle with is I see companies who pivot or change or do whatever they need to do as they refine their business model, but their mentors aren't changing. Your core business advisors should be helping with recruiting your team, with your business model, with your distribution model, and the product market fit. If they're not helping you with one of those four things, if they're not fundamentally the best in one of those things, they're the wrong people to be working with. And it's okay to say, I want to upgrade my mentor. I think one of the problems that people have when they build their teams, they build top down, really bad sign. You probably don't need a CFO or a CMO or a CTO or a COO. Why do you need junior and senior titles in your startup? You don't. What you need is a group of people that are busting their tail to get something done. It doesn't matter what their titles are. They're going to earn their titles. It's about having the roles defined and having a deep respect for each other's contribution. When you're dealing with Apple or IBM or Microsoft, one bad person doesn't have a huge effect on the overall culture. Right? It's one of how many tens of thousands of people. When you have five people sitting in a tiny room, one person is 20%. If that one person isn't pulling their weight, they're taking away from everybody else. You're rowing a boat all the same direction, right? So focus on the task and solving the problem and let the culture start to form. Really what it comes down to is, is this a great idea by a great team solving a meaningful problem with a real business model? So engage deep. Don't be afraid to change. Solve problems. Don't get caught up in the process and the culture of entrepreneurship. Go be an entrepreneur. That's cool, eh? So messy, chaotic. I don't know. I don't even know how else to, to conclude with that. But Coffin Foundation, if you haven't heard of it, they do the things called sketchbooks. They're all over YouTube. They're three to four minute snippets. Coffin Foundation is the global leader of entrepreneurship education. Uh, a myriad of resources, funny enough, most are free. Uh, so if you ever just want to take a break and show someone what you're doing and why you're doing it, Kaufman probably has a story to tell it using the, they're all the same kind of sketch. <laughs>